Hi, it's Gwen Fox and welcome to the to this channel. I really appreciate you being here. And if you haven't subscribed, do so because we would love to have you. It's a great group. But anyway, today I'm going to do a follow up on color. Color is so vital in our lives. It's sensual. It's like eating. It's just it's that sensual and we we're all we all gravitate to colors of a certain, like, I love the warmer colors. There are people that love the cooler colors. Not that I don't like them, is that I'm drawn to the warmer ones. And so in the color realm of art, there are two kinds of colors in that, well, there are more than that, but there's warm and there's cool. And then there is, there's transparent colors and opaque colors. And the transparent colors are the ones that we're going to deal with today. Because here's the thing, if you mix, then you know the bit, if you get too many colors in there, you're going to get mud. Well, if you keep mixing transparent colors, you will never get mud. You will get this glorious brown. The other thing is, is that there is a name for a transparent color. Anytime you see the word quinacridone, it means transparent. And that is in oil, watercolor, and acrylic. It doesn't matter. But quinacridone means transparent. Now, you do have other transparent colors that are not labeled that, but it's kind of nice to, to know when you see that long word that, oh, that's a transparent color. I don't even have to worry about it. I don't have to think. And so that is a really good thing. And mixing these colors, it's just awesome. Which what it does is it also eliminates you having to buy so many colors because let's face it, paint's expensive. And so we want to make sure that we get what we want. Now we're only going to deal with the transparents today and then maybe in the next session or the, another session, we'll deal with opaques and mixing them. But it's knowing how to mix the colors. And that sounds so silly, but it isn't. Knowing what to mix and what you're going to get, hey, I just say, let's play. Because play is going to teach us what we need to learn. If so you now, limit your palette to say, oh, three, four, up to five colors, no more than five, you're going to be much, much better off. And the reason is, is because when you mix all of these colors, you are going to find that all of them blend together. It, no matter if you have a cool gray over here and a warm gray over here, whatever, it's still going to hold together because all the colors, you've just used those amount of colors in this one painting. And that makes a huge difference. So now I'm going to put out my colors and we're going to mix colors and show you the beauty of transparent colors mixed. It's awesome. Okay, now I have put out quinacridone gold. Quinacridone Crimson and Quinacridone Magenta and Thalo Turquoise. Now, these are all transparent colors and they're absolutely gorgeous. But the reason, I know that these two are very much alike, but I wanted to show you what would happen if you mixed the two, why, why it's a little bit different. Let me get some paper towels here. And um, so I can wipe off my brush, that would be good. All right. The color that you're going to love the most is going to be probably the quinacridone gold because it is so luscious. So now let's mix though this quinacridone. Let's show you what this is like because it's so transparent. See that it's just. I mean, that's just good enough to eat. Now, the other one, the crimson, is going to be 
I'll have a little bit more red in it. The magenta has a lot of pink. You can see the difference here. The difference is the pink versus the red. And that's why I wanted to be able to show you the difference of these. Now here is my good old thalo, which is going to be very strong. Now, <coughs> if you mix these colors together, let's see if we mix, if we mix this, the thalo with the, with the uh, magenta, we are going to get a beautiful purple, or you could get a dark blue. Look at the dark blue there. But if you add more of this, you're going to get a purple. So you have to keep mixing. But it's so much fun. Okay, there's our purple. There's a wonderful purple. Now, what is going to happen, though, uh, is that I'm going to mix the crimson with the thalo. And what are we going to get there? We can get this gorgeous dark that is still transparent. Now let's just add some more of this. This is the magenta now that we're adding. And if we add more magenta, I mean, not magenta, I'm sorry, crimson, crimson. If we add more of that, look at what we get. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just such a rich color. But now if you want, let's say you would love to get an emerald green. So we're going to mix this with the phthalo turquoise and we're going to get depending on the the val the shade that you really want look at this this is a beautiful green but let's say we don't want that we want a warmer green just to add a little bit more maybe you want a more of a mossy green and so you just add a little bit. Oh, this is a gorgeous uh, brown. Look at that, a green brown. Ooh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, if we would like to get uh, a rust color, just plain old rust. We're going to mix the quinacridone gold and the magenta. And we'll get like um, a wonderful, rich, beautiful, oh gosh, look at that. That is so rich. That is so wonderful. And it's transparent. Now, let's see what we get if we mix the gold with the crimson. We will get just a richer version of it. This has, because this has more red in it, this has more yellow in it. So now we've, we have mixed, I think, all of these. Yes, we've mixed all of these together. But now what if we want to get, it looks to me like we're going to get this gorgeous eggplant or something. Look at this. <gasps> If you wanted an eggplant, you just add a little bit more of the purple and you've got yourself a beautiful eggplant. I think it would need a little bit more. Um, look at that. Oh, 
And see, it still stays transparent, and it's not mud. Now let's add some more. Let's add some the gold to this. What are we going to get? A super, super rich brown. If we add some magenta, uh, no, crimson. We're going to get a red brown. That is stupendous. And then if we add a magenta, notice I'm not cleaning out my brush. I'm just, I'm, I'm having fun. This paper is really absorbing these colors to the point that it, they kind of go away. So they're going to have to be a little heavier. So this is the beauty of this. I mean, if we could make all of these colors with this and we just, let's just, just for fun. I mean, I'm, I'm ready for fun. Come on. Oh, look at this. Look at this one. And let's just put all of this in. Let's put all of this in. And let's see what we get. I bet we get a super dark because, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm guessing because look at what's here. But I had more of this. This is a strong color. And so let's put this, look at this. It's like a rich black. And if we let's just put it around here, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? And you just scratch through that. And you've got that wonderful color. This is the beauty of transparents, guys. This is, you can do so much with them. Now let's, just one last thing before, before we quit on this, is that let's take this. It's a thin transparent. And let's do a wash over this. I have made, because I've done a wash, I have made another value, another shade of each one of these. And that is what happens when you do layering. And I think it's just fabulous to be able to do that. So I hope you know that you can do so much. Okay, well now, let's, let's just for fun. I won't, I won't quit yet. Let's do a tad of that orange. That orange, I love. That orange alone is just gorgeous. But that orange is this. Now, what if we added that orange, which is opaque, to the mix? Now we're getting into some different territory. So we're going to get a much richer brown. Because, and I have to say, I'm, I'm really disappointed in this paper. I don't know why it's absorbing it so much. But let me put out some more of the gold. Use more of the gold than probably anything. Or at least I do. Now I'm going to rinse this out. We're going to mix the transparent and the the op the opaque, the vat orange. But by doing this, instead of let me get this over so you can see this, instead of being that color, it's going to have more gold in it. But look how rich it is. Look how rich that is. That's beautiful. Now, and then, I mean, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Because transparent, I mean, um, that orange is right in the middle. It, it's, 
it's not truly opaque, not totally, but it's um, just right in the middle of the spectrum as far as transparent or uh, opaque. So, I mean, I could play all day. I could, because of all of, because of these colors, I could make umpteen more. And then the beauty of that is that then what I'm going to, then what I would do is come in, I'm going to layer over these because they just disappeared. And so you would layer over them. It's just so much fun. Don't hesitate to play with your colors because that's what they're here for. They're not here to keep safe. Now that's just the true, see when you make, when you put that over another color, look at what you're getting. Let's put this over this. And when you're doing, say, a flower, a landscape, or whatever, and you want something to pop, look at what you can do. There's the vat orange, and then you can layer over some of the vat orange with the crimson, and you've got this gorgeous color. It's endless. It's just endless. Got any questions? You just let me know, and I and will answer them, because there are always questions, and no question is too silly. So enjoy. Go play. Okay. Now you know how to mix all these transparents and never get mud. So I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, it's going to be opaques. Talk to you then.